overview while we wait for him to come in. I know we've talked about this before um, at length, but this is for the mountain biking trails on the land that Patrick Milliken owns on both sides of the river, um, on this side of the road as well as that side. Um, so Mr. Wiles is working to apply for a recreational trails program grant, um, which goes up to $100,000 to build the first phases of this trail. Um, the idea for the trail is to line the river as well as kind of capitalize on some of the historical aspects of the mill as well as, um, I know they talked about the Indian head by the river. Um, going through it, uh, it phased off in four sections, I believe, for a total of, I want to say 10 miles in total, and it would be completely non-motorized. So it could be for hiking, biking, um, hiking or biking, but not for ATVs and not for horses. Not for horses. Not for horses. Um, Spartanburg County Parks has agreed to do um, biannual maintenance of the trail, um, which is great to have them on board. And PALS, the Parties for Active Living that has the Dan Trail in Spartanburg, they've agreed to put on all their maps and arrows showing future Catholic Trail on it. So that's good to go ahead and get the ball rolling, although it might not be built today, tomorrow, or next year, but it's coming in the future. Um, it will be single track trail, which means that it would be three feet wide maximum with the trail corridor being cut approximately two feet on each side with an eight foot overhead. Um, so how the grant works, um, we have to get public input and comments just to, so the grant can be reassured that it is something that our community wants and needs. Um, but we can wait for Mr. Wiles to get here. He should be here in the next few minutes because that's all I really know. too bad. Not bad at all. So um, hopefully uh, Allie lets you guys know where where we are with, uh, with the trail process. So we're going to be applying for the uh, recreation, Recreational Trail Program grant, which can uh, offer us up to $100,000 in, uh, in money towards the building of trails in the town of Packlet. Uh, we've been working pretty hard to get local support uh, and uh, put together all the, the packages that we need to be able to submit that package. It's due January 4th. Um, and um, we, just to give you guys a little background on the trail, so it would be as part of the Packlet Milliken property starting over here, um, at, starting at the, the old mill site uh, near parking where the, the kayak takeout is. Uh, phase one of the trail systems would be on both sides of the river on the Packlet Milliken land. Uh, and we'd be able to get, uh, for phase one, about four miles on each side of the river. Um, the, we've been working with Blue Ridge Trail Works to work on the topo maps and understand exactly our best routes uh, as part of our submittal. Um, my company, Lyles Construction, will be commissioning a survey of, their, of the land and of the, the, uh, the maps to submit with our, um, with our package. Uh, that'll take place sometime between now and January 4th, so I'm trying to uh, pin down the day. Um, that'll help us figure out exactly how many bridges we're going to need for gully and creek crossings, uh, which are typically the more expensive items when it comes to trail building. Uh, right now with the trail systems, we're looking at about uh, $6 of a linear foot with, uh, with both the trails and the, uh, the bridges that we presume will need to be out there. Uh, in order to offset that $6, we're also working with the Palmetto Conservation Corps 
which uh, is a, it, it's still a, a paid group, but it's a, uh, a not-for-profit group that uh, takes people in different, you know, people that are interested in, in getting into the outdoor industry. It's a starting point for them. It's a quasi-volunteer organization. You pay for room and board. Uh, but they would help us with some of the finished work and help offset, uh, hopefully be able to take about a dollar to $1.50 linear foot off of that $6 cost that we're working on right now. But worst case scenario, the total budget that we're estimating right now is about $300 for $300,000 for the uh, phase one trail system. So the, but the uh, first four miles on this side of the river would be our initial focus, which we would put the RTP money towards. That would, uh, the, the RTP grant and the match from the town of Packlet, uh, which is really why we're here and asking for that, would be the, uh, would, would really take care of that first four miles. You're saying on both sides of the river, are you saying down the river or up the so or on the other side? Right now, and I should have brought some, some blown up maps, but uh, it's, it's the parcel that, that spans the river here, essentially goes from, uh, from the, um, the, Amphitheater up river, and it, it, it's almost mirrored on both sides of the river there. Uh, so it comes all the way down to the dam. So we would actually connect the trails to people coming down here through the uh, through, through the flat down here, and then going across okay. the uh, the bridge, correct, and then, and then tying back in. But it's all on the uh, we'll, we'll call it the, the north side of the river. Here. Okay. Uh, the town of uh, Milliken was most comfortable with that. It's actually, we were, because that's the, the largest piece of property, we were originally going to save that for phase four, but they would want to go ahead and do that as, as phase one and um, just kind of fighting off the biggest piece here to start. So the, uh, the, the RTP grant would really cover the first four miles, which we would build on this side on the town side of the river. And then we would use that momentum, we'd go out and, uh, and try to raise private funds to, to match for the additional, and, and find other grants as they become available. Um, we've got a lot of good momentum too with connectivity that uh, the um, Partners for Active Living, uh, have, uh, they, they've been working hard on the Dan Trail, which has been in uh, on Goldmine Road uh, as part of their feature plan. They've agreed, and if you look at a lot of the new Dan uh, maps, they show uh, future connectivity to Packet, which as of last week is a new uh, a new feature on their maps, which is pretty excited. Uh, we've been trying to plot out uh, a way to connect to their trail system. They just uh, got a huge, huge grant from the state, uh, and they have a lot of really good plans, and they will be ending now about three, four miles shy of where these trail systems would, would land here. So just the, the ability for future connections is, is huge. Uh, and to be able to get everything, you know, to continue from Spartan Road all the way here to Packlet, be on a, a road bike or, or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so what we're asking is that the, the town uh, agree to be the sponsor of our RTP application and uh, agree to the match costs of that RTP application, which Allie, correct me if I'm wrong, $25,000. $20,000, thank you. I am wrong, so uh, yes, we, we would like uh, to, to match the, the $20,000 from the town, and that would be you know, only if we're approved, and it would be a guaranteed $100,000 as part of the program. And we've, uh, we're going to go out and raise additional private funds to try for, for, to make sure phase one gets done to match privately in a private capital campaign of $20,000 that the town also would put up. Um, happy to answer any further questions that can help clarify. Uh, if anybody, anybody has any or, or any comments or ideas too, we're uh, still putting everything together here. The 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 Palmetto Conservation Corps. It is. So they actually do all of the maintenance on the Palmetto Trail. Uh, so they were recommended to us by the South Carolina uh, Department of 
Parks and Recreation, and specifically uh, Neil, what's Neil, son? Neil Hamilton, who is in charge of the Recreation Trail Program. Uh, so to actually them being part of our package is something that looks really good to, to the grant reviewers here. Do you have some kind of idea of how much, uh, how many people would use it? Uh, what, what kind of, you know, add to the community would that, would that be as far as the shopping or, you know? Yeah, so we're still, uh, we're still trying to put those numbers together. Um, and the, I think the best comp right now for a trail of this size and caliber is Lake Welchel. Um, and I don't have those numbers on hand, but I'm happy to, to send those to you guys. It's a, it's a pretty huge draw. We actually sat in the parking lot one Saturday morning and uh, saw four different state license plates from around in, you know, in Gap, or 15 minutes outside of Gaffney. Um, you can't really that whole interest of theirs shut down. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get to right now. So, yeah, yeah so. Uh, <laughs> so. I use, I'll work with a, um, one of my co-workers is a big trail bike rider. And there's several of him in groups that get together and they do travel and go to different areas to ride the bike. So it, it, it is, it's a big thing. I mean, I'm not in that whole world, but mm -hmm. you listen to him and where they go and what they do. I mean, it's there's a lot of people around Cross State Park. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. Cross State Park is another good comp. Mm -hmm. That would really be the uh, that's kind of the gold standard for this area. Mm -hmm. These kinds of trails. And we're right here at it. And we're up in Park Park, and I think it will be well used. Okay. Yeah, so I've gone in front of a, just one of the local bike organizations, Spark River Mountain Bike Association. They've actually written a letter of support for this project and they've agreed to, uh, I think it's a 200 man hours a year in trail maintenance and they have 400 members and you know their, their reach goes far beyond that um, and, and that's, a, that's kind of a good example of just one small group that we've tapped into now that would support this project and would use it and people that you know may not may not spend really any time in fact that are going to uh, you know, be able to see that trail system. It would be the idea between ultimately there's additional phases that we'd like to tie in and get up to 15 to 25 miles of trail. That's what we, you know, that's a big swing, of course, but depending on uh, pack what Milliken's input and uh, additional funds, of course, in the next five to 10 years, we'd be able to bring in bike races. The whole Clifton area project is coming up, be nothing but a big. Uh, hopefully that'll be a very good uh, inspiration, right? Yeah. That, yeah, I think uh, being able to connect like these, that project and this project, it's, it's an outdoor, you know, it's a hub for the outdoors. It's, it's going to be huge. Do you know how much that grant, the whole connection between mine, what, do you know? Um, well, so the uh, Park Distraction Living Group, they were awarded $23 million for their overall dam trail work. Now that is, I think, it's like 46 additional miles of trails that connect all around Spartanburg County. Um, but really until these conversations, it's always been in, their, in the back of their mind that they've never, they never had, with the exception of the nature trail here, anything to connect here. So they're really excited about this possibility. They've been super supportive as well.
Also, to win these types of grants, in my experience, which is somewhat limited, but I, I've done a few things like this, and every time it is, they want to know not just the technical aspects of how do we make it happen, but they want to know why you want to make it happen. What's, it, what's in it for us? What's in it for Packlet? What's in it for the people who live in the area? And, and I can tell you, as a resident, it means a lot. Um, young people who are not busy find trouble. And so these are the kind of things that we need. And so anyway, I just want to throw that out there. And if you need help, I'll leave you my contact information. The first person to jump in will help. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else? Any quick comments? Burned down, and 
the uh, hill was never leveled, the rubbish was never cleared, and now it's gotten to the point where it is so serious that you can't even walk down the sidewalk because of all of the overgrowth. And um, we have been subjected to, my neighbor told me that he's killed three rats in his house, and now I have them in the attic, and I also have a, a daughter that is disabled, so not only is it a hazard, but it's a health hazard. It is, I, I talked to the council about this uh, before in terms of clearing you know, the hill, they told me they didn't know how to get in contact with uh, the owner. I talked to my neighbor who gave me the uh, manager of the facility, of the property number, which I passed along. I have made numerous calls, uh, which can be uh, substantiated by the uh, town secretary. And I don't know why, as a senior citizen on a fixed income, that I have to be burdened with pain over $125. I've had people come out. I've had traps set. I've uh, done all I can do to abate the problem. And I'm really at my wit's end. And I'm really very angry about it because this has been going on for a number of years. And I didn't come to Packer to live with rats. I never lived with rats before, and I'm not happy about doing it now. And I am really urging the city council under the leadership of the mayor to take some action because I don't want to hear any more excuses. I'm at my wit's end. And I should not be victimized if, in fact, the city has not been diligent in terms of clearing that hill. If they have to do it and, and uh, build the owner, he had a for sign sale on that lot. It's down now. And it's not fair. You know, I'm very diligent about taking out my garbage, and so is my neighbor. And if, in fact, it is a fact that the person across the street who various neighbors have reported that he's really filthy, then something ought to be done. There has to be some kind of provision where if a person poses a health hazard or a health risk to his neighbors, that action can be taken. So I really am urging you because I really don't want to be a thorn in your side, but I'm not gonna put up with my sin anymore. I'm just not gonna do it. So I thank you and I hope that you can expedite some kind of action because I do have options. And that's not, you know, threatening anybody, but I, I'm not living with how would you feel if you woke up in the, the night and you heard something scurrying across your attic floor? Or you go to get a drink of water and there's a big rat running across the floor. I don't think it's fair, and I think that uh, there has been, somebody dropped the ball, and now it's time to pick it up and, and clear that field. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll take it under consideration and look into the problem. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, this is, uh, Rita Burgess. Sure, Don here. Is Don, can you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank y'all for letting me speak. On behalf of the Rose, uh, White Rose Cemetery Committee, they wanted me to come and ask the town would reimburse us some, some money or give us a, a sizable donation so that we can keep the grass cut at White Rose Cemetery because we're losing money since we didn't get to work the Christmas lights this year. So. You know, if y'all sit in your heart, I wish you would because we had to switch lawn care service and it's charging us $500 a cut now. Wow. So it's, it's not cheap keeping that cemetery up. And that's where all our money was made at the Christmas lights. And also, <coughs> excuse me, we're getting ready to have a burial for the, uh, the child's remains, the fetus that was found on Milliken Street in the wall and we're going to bury your child at White Rose. And due to the age of the child and how long it's been and everything, that was the only cemetery around at that time, so we just thought it was just right just to put her there. So 
I didn't know if y'all would be interested in attending. I can notify you when, when we do have it all put together. I'm waiting on the funeral home in the uh, corner to, to okay everything and get everything going, and then we're going to have one. Uh, we'll have like a little graveside service, and that's all we'll have for. We'll have a pastor there. And, uh, that, you know, just a small little community ceremony. So I didn't know if, if you'd like for me to, I'll, I'll be glad to tell the mayor or, or call him, each of you or whatever you want if you'd like to attend, just let me know. And thank y'all for letting me speak. Merry Christmas, Tyler. Have a good one. Thank you, Ruth. <clears throat> yeah, he's a proven leader in the Christian community. Yeah. 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 This annexation request was received last week from the owners of the property. It is on Vine Church Road. It's eligible for annexation due to it being the current lines up to the road, um, so it, it can be annexed in. The property is used as a rental Airbnb property, and the owners would like to annex in to ensure proper police protection to ensure their guests um, that they wouldn't have to wait for a long response from the county, as well as to receive trash pickup. Um, I recommend this annexation as um, it will bring in not only property base, but also um, business license from the Airbnb. Any questions? Thank you. 
Um, but we have them all stored. They will have to be put together, um, just the wheels snapped on. So we hope to, once we get the rules and regulations nailed down and the additional cart purchases begin rolling them out um, within the next few weeks. Um, I've provided for you a three-page um, documentation that has one overview of the rules and procedures, one graphic chart, and it's that one in your hand, didn't you? That one. Oh, okay. And then the following is a short kind of Q&A, general questions. Um, if you'll look over that, that's what we would like to fold up, put in an envelope, and distribute with all of the cans. And what it says is that you must use the town car, you must be at the road. Um, with us using the COVID funds to get the carts, we have to make sure that we follow, you know, them not touching the bags anymore. Um, so a few things that we do need to decide um, if someone doesn't have, or someone already has a roll car of their own, can they use that, or does it have to be the tent? Do we want to be completely uniform, and it just be the town car? If they need additional one, they can come and get it from the town, um, but it has to be the town car. I've seen municipalities do it both ways. That's just something that um, council needs to discuss and decide before we roll them out. Yeah, that's the thing. It, if it, they provide their own, it wouldn't. Okay. It would. I think the biggest issue here is, is, is if the cart is able to be picked up by the mechanism on the back of the garbage truck. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people have rolled carts that don't have the proper Spot. bars and, and, and it doesn't facilitate the truck. So if they do have it, then they can use it as a second. But if it's not able to be picked up by the truck, then I'm sorry, please don't complain. Because the object here is to prevent them from having to grab the trash bag out of it and use the truck to lift the can. Mm -hmm. So if there's some trash carts that don't have the proper bars mm -hmm. and they fill them, we can't dump them. Yeah, I think have that's. To out the proper bar. We're going to have to see the car. It's not. I don't, there's no measurement to when, when you purchase when you purchase a trash can. But if. But if. <coughs> Some have one bar and then a lift that's molded into the yeah. plastic, and some have two bars. I know we do have some roll carts that can't be on the dump on the truck. Yeah, so how would, how would I know that, or how would you know, Mr. Smith know that? And I think that's why most municipalities do make it uniform. It has to be ours. Yeah, um, there is no gray line. I think the, the issue with that is, is if you go over the floor, what do you do? And then you're picking it up off the ground, or... Mm -hmm. you know, like and that's what we do have, we will, I do have on the next side on the agenda to decide what we want that amount to be for additional cans. Um, I've researched different municipalities and found between 75 to 65. So I recommend 70 um, because the price has gone up. Um, and that would be a one-time fee. You would come to town hall, pay your $75, and then you would have use of the can at that residence. You would not own the can. The can would still be property of the town, but we would be letting you lease it or use it and have that documentation. So each can would be assigned to the actual residence, not to the person. The second can also you're talking about, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the first can is one and then 70. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody will get one can, and then any additional cans would be that cost. Okay, so it's uniform. Correct. And you can make it what you want. Um, I think our wholesale cost was. 58, I believe, per can. Um, but then when we get it back, then it's not going to be in, in that condition. Um, so it, it's up to you all to decide. Okay, so, okay. 
what they decided they don't need after a while. Yeah, they can return it, um, but it's just like a, a rental fee almost. Uh, But we do need to decide before we are able to distribute it. Yes. But we can what, we can hold off on distributing. We can distribute the initial. However, the secondary can be later. Okay. So I do have it on that sheet because I know people will call and ask um, when we give out the first one. Some people are going to automatically know they need a digital pen and call and ask. Right. Well, yeah. If they do, we can go ahead and purchase them with that pen, but we're not going. How will this? How will that cost be? It will. So they would, if they need additional can, we have on them to call town hall or come to town hall. Um, Kayla will. They'll come in, say they need a can. We'll send Travis out to document, get the number, serial number on the can, and then take it to the residents. Kayla would document that, so she's going to have a master Excel sheet because every can will have a serial number assigned to a residents. So when they go out and distribute all the cans, they'll write down trash can 01, 180 Montgomery Avenue. So if 180 Montgomery Avenue comes back in and says I need an additional can, okay, can 2, 130 Montgomery Avenue. So that log will be there where each can is. Okay. Um, the one-time fee. Mm -hmm. That would be paid to town hall? Yeah. The resident? Paid to town hall to, by the resident and put to the general fund. For the additional can, and that will be documented on that master sheet. Have we decided if we want to do it uniform or you know, if somebody has a can that would work? Or you, or well, if somebody has a can that works, and then if, then if they, then they. But it satisfies the ordinance as far as being able to be stored properly. The, if it satisfies the ordinance where the trash guys don't have to use their hands to pick it up. So okay. if, if the can is not able to be lifted by the truck yeah. and it is left there still full, <coughs> then that's going to be the issue in the future. Is how many people do not have their trash picked up because the truck wasn't able to pick it up. Because the can doesn't fit the truck. Well, what I was trying to think of Mabel was that they would get an additional can like everybody else. Even if they have a can that works, it would go that route if they have a can that works. And then they get their initial a can that everybody else gets. Then they have their second can at no cost. All right. All right. If it works. If it works. Yeah. That's for those who can't oh, afford I think the I think the idea is, is if there if there are citizens that have a can that think that works, that's what but it simply to. doesn't, then what do you do at that point? That's what I'm saying. We need to find out what measurements are. It is all, a bar. All cans, all cans that are able to be picked up by mm -hmm. a truck mm -hmm. are the same. They well, are the same is, size. Well, mine is a bar. You're correct. Right. Yes. If, so your, if yours has a bar across and a lip above, then the truck can pick it up. Mm -hmm. And there's some cans that simply don't, have, they, they, they look appropriate, but they, they don't work. And, and typically it's either 50 or 70 gallon roll cars. It has to be the right height, it has to be the right width, and then it's stick in there and has to lift it. So there's a lot of things. But what I know is, is if the can was bought specifically for a truck to dump, then it can always be dumped by those trucks because they're all built the same way. 
However, you buy a 25 gallon trash can that you normally can stick three bags in, it's not going to be able to be dumped by the truck. Even if you might think it should be or could be, it's not going to be. And then at that point, you're going to have a phone call at town hall, they pick up my trash, and then Tony's going to have to talk to potentially, you know, 15, 20 people. So in a way, if you follow the ordinance, the issue would have come up with it. Right. right. And, and, if, and so there's going to be complaints, there's going to be something that says, well, it should work, I don't know why it doesn't, and you didn't pick it up. I pay taxes to pick up my trash. So if the ordinance says that only these specific trash cans, town-owned trash cans, can be done, then you have to either buy a secondary or we have to decide whether you can use your own, which is going to create more work and potential issues with the citizens because their can wasn't able to be done. Is that um, separate um, from <coughs> Um, it could it would probably be hard to harder to keep up with. Um, it could cause issues of people not paying, saying, "Okay, I'm gonna come in. My first pay is ten dollars, and then you'll never see them again." Um, but. They're fixing, they're getting ready to get a cart that will hold almost double what everybody, I've like picked up the trash uh, several yeah, times, yeah. I've picked up the trash several times with the trash, and, and most people have a 25, 30 gallon can, they're getting ready to have a 70 gallon can. So a lot more garbage yeah. will fit in the town issued can than what they previously mm -hmm. had. So I, I think, I think the, the, the idea is that they're going to only be able to use one can like before where they might have had two small ones or something like that. Most other municipalities, one can is plenty enough. Now, if you have a family of seven and you produce a lot of, you know, garbage. And I know I've heard we have some that'll have like four or five cans out and have one bag in each one, which then creates a lot of waste of time because you're getting- Yeah, I've, I've seen that myself. Well, they, but, uh, yeah. It needs to be uniform um, across all the citizens of the town to make, it, to make it easy. So if we decide that you're allowed to use a separate can, that's fine, but that's uniform across the town if the can can be dumped by the truck. Or we can make it easier for the town and, and the town's office and say it's only the town's issued cans. I mean, as well as me, I have to sell mine or throw them away or give them to somebody or you know, something of that sort if it's only packed with issued cans. You know, so, so everybody right now will have to either make a decision. Are you using only the town cans or are you going to buy a second one as well? Um, there's always the idea that if you have too much and you can't fit it in a single can, then it costs roughly from here to the little dump maybe eight dollars in gas to throw away the rest of it. But we have an argument there. I'm just looking at proposed. I Distributing for until we decide. Yeah, I, I think we need to find some kind of middle ground for those who aren't going to be able to afford a second can, but need that second. Can. I mean, are we going to yeah. Are we holding off on the initial one, or are we holding off on the second? Second. Second. second so we go ahead and roll out the, the one can. Yeah. But then what? Will, what do I need to tell the girls in the office when someone calls because they need an additional can? Any cans whatsoever, 
that they have to be able to, we have to decide whether they can only pick up packet pins or we'll allow them to pick up their private pins or they have to get additional pins for each time packet as well. So if we let any pins go out right now, then we have to decide whether <coughs> there's extra trash pins there, the trash company just or trash guys pick them up <coughs> with, or they don't. Well, it, it, we're not going to figure it all out one time anyway. Yeah, it'll take mm -hmm. weeks. You know, we don't have it, how exactly how long it'll take, um, but we need to we need to make them aware then that when we distribute these, you know, and make them beforehand and make them understand that this is the way it's going to be. Because mm -hmm. that's the, that was the goal is to take the packet, we'll put it in an envelope put it to the can so when they get their can, they'll open the envelope, have a full disclosure of everything it entails, what they can do, what they can't do, how to get another one, um, general questions, facts, and then it's all out there. So as the cans roll out, that way there's no cost to the Postal Service to mail everybody in the town. And while it's still clean and... Brand new, we need your letter. Mm -hmm. This is what you do if you want a second one or use or not. <coughs> And the goal, you know, going back a few years, the goal of the trash ordinance and the cans is an overall to clean up the town, beautify the town, get the trash cans off the road, get the litter, get the bags from being broken. Um, when everything, when it's all uniform, you know, they all have the lids, the lids must be closed so the trash doesn't blow out. And that was the goal all along. And, and that's when we talked about why the trash truck, the trash truck was purchased was the idea of we're going to get trash cans eventually and use specific cans so that everything looks the same. Gums, they don't have to pick through it, pick it up off the ground, so on and so forth. I think that's the that's the that's the way you know, I know all the other municipalities are all like that. In that Cherokee County they don't they do the Cherokee County. Trash cans. They don't do anybody else. And just to verify, that was for the, if they want to get it, they can for the fee, but are we going to allow their own if it does die? Okay, so we, we drop back to number eight, we want to allow any other can. We need to go vote on that too. I think it needs to be uniform. Uh, I would say resolution for that to be. Just a, discuss, just a discussion, so I can give the direction. My personal opinion needs to be uniform, so that that way it's simplified for the town's employees. They know what to pick up, what not to pick up, and the residents will eventually understand this is the way it's going to be. And long term, I think it's a better idea. But no one likes change. No. Eventually, when they get in the routine, of, yeah. well, you know what to it's going to be a change. 
saw was when they got some in uh, or little apartments and things yeah. Yeah. and they it's gonna be a big change for them. I think that's the, the major thing is like right now some some residents the, the trash guys have to grab a bag out of the thing because they can't move the <clears> hand. <throat> members of the town council. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it's a, an honor to serve you again. I recognize a lot of you for some <coughs> sessions we've had in the past, uh, and I've been here and there involved with, uh, with Packwood, so I, I, I'm honored with the opportunity to continue to serve you. Uh, certainly, we're going to miss Alex. You've got a great opportunity, uh, as she moves on to Clemson. Uh, my goal uh, is to do the best I can uh, through the process to get good applicants in for this council to consider as a replacement. Had a great meeting with uh, Mayor Camby uh, before Thanksgiving, and we've actually already got uh, one. Uh, we just did get it posted at the Appalachian Council Governor's website, MASC, and I did send the job posting to USC's Masters of Public Administration program as well as Clemson's and the College of Charleston. So hopefully, we are casting a pretty good net. We're going to get some good applicants in. Uh, we've asked that they be submitted by December 22nd. Uh, I will certainly keep this council appraised uh, of that process as we go. Uh, and, and hopefully, I uh, think we'll get some good ones. There's a lot of exciting things going on right now in Packwood. And so I think that uh, there's going to be some, uh, it's going to attract particularly some of the young uh, up and comers like, like Allie is. And hopefully, we'll get some good applicants for that. Meanwhile, uh, serving as your administrator, I will be on site the better part of every Tuesday, but I'm also going to be available to every one of you 24-7, uh, 365. I know that this job is, is, is always on. And so uh, I had a good discussion with uh, uh, Tony and Casey uh, last week. They have my cell phone number. Mayor Camby does. I'd be glad to share it with every one of y'all. Uh, Chief Alexander has that. Uh, and again, I look forward to supporting the staff. I look forward to working to make sure your goals and plans are pursued. And my job is just going to be the caretaker and to keep the ball rolling and to continue what y'all are working on uh, on a day-to-day -day type basis. And then also work to facilitate the process to get some good applicants for this council to consider uh, for the next administrator here for the town of Packer. So again, thank you for the opportunity. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, leave it with that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Do you have a question? Can we change this resolution to more than part time? Sir? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't hear you. The resolution says part time. Can we change that? <laughs> <laughs> it would be part time. <laughs> I do have some other things to do with the cop, but I would be doing whatever I need to do here. And, uh, Mr. Wright, if there's a, a meeting that you said, Trey, I want you down here for next Wednesday or next Thursday morning, I want to meet with these folks. Anything like that that comes up, I'm going to be available to you, and I'm going to be here uh, to, to take care of that and do what you need. So, so all, all, all business that is not able to be tied up by Allie, you're, you're 
familiar with, aware of, and Allie and I, uh, I'm not very familiar as she is, but we did have a good meeting on Tuesday of this week, uh, so I know where the files are, I'm going to get access to the computer, uh, but basically we've got an excellent uh, clerk that has been here and, and knows this town as good as anybody in, in Tony, and I basically told her last uh, Tuesday that my job is to support what y'all are doing, the same thing I told uh, John earlier this evening walking in, so... Uh, but yes, I do have access to everything. I will be available to, you know, tap in. If there's information you need, let me know. We'll make sure we get it, uh, get it out to you. And again, my job is just going to be to keep keep things going, keep addressing the plans, goals, and things that this council needs to achieve. As far as concerns with the employees, you got that covered too, right? Day to day concerns with the employees. Uh, the chief has an issue or something. You're you're able to work with them. And Absolutely. Yes, sir. One thing I did was actually be part of the process to select the next chief, and then he's doing a lot of great things. But uh, again, my role is going to be to support him. But if he has a major issue one night, I, I, I will get a phone call, and he's going to say, Here's what's going on. Do we need to let deal with the press? Do we need to let the mayor and council know about it? And we'll talk through that and come up with a solution. So I'm available to John 24 7. I'm available to all of y'all uh, the same thing. Yes. And, and I was kind of taking on Travis as well, the, 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 trash, the trash crew. Yes, sir. We're going to need a lot of help coming up. And I, I, I can just sense there's getting ready to be some big changes. So right. I think y'all are working to do some good things. I know there's been discussion for a while. I think the safety uh, of the employees are going to be uh, benefited by what you're doing. Right. I think having a uniform uh, with the lids on it is going to be a benefit to the community. You're not going to have the trash rolling out. And I think some good points made. You know, once everybody gets their first container and realizes the size of it, it's probably going to take care of a lot of their needs. Uh, so I think, but there is that change. And so there's going to be the process. So I think Allie's presented the, uh, the documentation that each citizen's going to get. Uh, and I'm going to be available to citizens to answer questions. Certainly, the majority of those calls are coming to Tony and Casey. But I'll certainly be available to, 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 to help with any citizen and, and explain anything that they have come up with. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? I make a motion to approve resolution 21 117. Second. Motion made and seconded is approved resolution 21 117. All in favor? All opposed. Thank, Thank you. Much. <laughs>
We have 19 entries into the parade as of today. Applications can be picked up at Town Hall or filled out on our website. Then immediately following the parade, Spartanburg County Parks will be hosting a Christmas event at the T.W. Edwards Center, and it will feature candy, hot chocolate, and a visit with Santa. Code enforcement, Chris, Chris Harper will be finishing his training and get his International Property Maintenance Code certification by the end of this month um, through CCI. His training in Woodruff has been great for him. He's learned how to deal with some of the issues that we're facing. Um, he's actually talked them about the issue that the um, lady spoke about earlier. And um, just on your all's behalf, if you'll just continue to promote the reporting of code enforcement via the text my gov and the website contact form, those will be sent to Mr. Harper directly and it will kind of speed up the process. And then, like Mr. Eubank spoke on, the town administrator search, I'll be available to assist with this transition as much as possible. I'll always be available for phone calls and texts to answer any questions. And once someone is hired, I'm happy to come back as a day or two and show them around and kind of dump my brain as much as I can. Um, that's kind of all I have. And just a final thank you. I won't go into long detail like I did last time, but just thank you all for the opportunity and for believing in me. Yeah, well. 